Good evening, everybody. I trust that you are well. Um, I apologize for this late video. Um, it's been one of those weeks. But, yeah, just to say that it's been good to be back in the house of God again this past few weeks. Um, I'm sure like, we all enjoyed Sunday, Sunday, Sunday's worship service. Um, it's just been good to get back into church, see everybody, and, and worship together as a family again. And this week's study sort of ties into that into worshiping as a body and worshiping Jesus. Um, we'll be looking at unit 26, um, session 1. That's the story found in Luke 19, verses 35 to 40, of Jesus entering Jerusalem um, on the back of a donkey and the crowds praising him. And, and so looking at that, um, some themes that come out of that story. So the first point that the study makes is that Jesus is the Messiah who receives praise from his people, who claims the praise from his people. Jesus um, tells two of his disciples to go into Jerusalem to find the donkey, to find a young donkey, and tie it and bring it to him so that he can enter Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And um, what Jesus is doing here is not... It's not by accident, it's not a a by and by decision that he makes. He's purposefully fulfilling a prophecy found in Zechariah 9 verse 9, which states that, um, Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt on the fold of a donkey. And what Jesus is doing here is purposefully fulfilling this prophecy in Zechariah. He's claiming the title of king by doing this. So it's not the accidental thing, he's purposefully doing this. And the people, the crowds surrounding Jerusalem are those who see him, who see him coming down the Mount of Olives. Um, the Jewish people recognize what has happened, they recognize the prophecy because they knew the scriptures. And they respond in turn, um, they respond by worshipping him as king. They um, use the words coming out of, of Psalm 8, 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. Um, basically acknowledging that they see what Jesus is doing. And they are with him. They, they give him the praise that he is claiming. And likewise, the, the Pharisees also recognize what Jesus is doing. They also see that this is not... They, they can see the prophecy. They know the scriptures. They can see it being fulfilled in front of them. Um, but they choose to deny Jesus' claim. And the point that is made is that as a people, as human beings, we were made to be worshippers. One way or another, we are going to worship something. If not Jesus, if we don't recognize our true king, we will be worshipping something in his place. And Jesus is claiming to be the one true um, object of that worship. The one who truly deserves the worship and adoration that we were made to give. Jesus, Jesus is also the Messiah who weeps for his people. Not only is he claiming to be king, but he's also claiming to be God himself in this particular visit to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Verse 44 in Luke 19, um, or in that part, Jesus is... This, he, he's weeping over Jerusalem as he's looking down in the city. He's describing the destruction of Jerusalem, all because, in verse 44, they did not recognize the time of their visitation, as it says in the, the ESV and the King James Version. The NIV makes it a little bit more clear when, when it says, you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Also, um, it's a bit more of a liberal translation, but in the message it says, the message translation it says that we did not recognize and welcome the time of God's personal visit. So in describing the destruction of the city and giving a reason as you didn't recognize that I'm here, that God is here to see you, he's making a very bold and dangerous claim. He's threatening, essentially threatening Jerusalem with destruction describing what's going to happen to them because they didn't recognize his claim to be king and his claim to be God. And he's doing this in front of this entire crowd that has been following and worshiping him and in front of 
the Pharisees who are denying him. But all this is not done in judgment, it's not done in anger, it's done in sadness. It's done with tears coming out of his eyes as he weeps over the city's destruction because of their failure to see him as God and as King. Jesus has compassion for the lost who refuse to acknowledge him. At this point he doesn't have anger for them, he's not in judgment of them, he's compassionate for those who fail to see him as King. And the point is made that how do we react to those who are dying without Christ, who are dying as, as lost people? Do we have apathy and we just don't care? Do we turn to judgment and, and ridicule and, and sort of anger at their actions? Or are we moved to tears and are we moved to compassion? Are we moved to our knees? Are we moved to, to want to go out and, and help them and change their or change their mind, so to speak, because of their lost status. Jesus takes the example for us in, in his tears and in his sadness towards these people. And the last point is made is that Jesus is the Messiah who restores true worship through his people. God is not fooled by our hypocrisy. He's not fooled by our attempts to... to Sorry, he's not fooled by our hypocrisy. Um, the Pharisees at the time and and, the, and certain um, business people we can call within the, the, the Jerusalem society had a very successful money-making agenda um, within the, the temple grounds itself. Um, it was done under the guise of piety, it was done under the guise of, of worship, um, but in the end were exploiting the poor who are coming to worship at the temple, selling them lambs and selling them whatever goods they needed for the sacrifices at that sort of inflated costs and making it very difficult for people to come into the, 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 the that particular area of the temple and worship God because of, number one, so much happening around them. It's a marketplace. It's not the place of worship. It's very loud and very sort of not an, an, an worshipful environment. And this angered Jesus. Um, this is the same Jesus who, who went to eat with tax collectors, who, who amongst his closest followers were very bad sinners, prostitutes, um, murderers. And these people Jesus welcomed. He, he spent time with them. He shared with them. But he fiercely and violently attacked those hypocritical religious elite who put so much obstacles in the way of people coming to want to worship God um, in the temple. And I'm sure many of us know examples of churches or church leaders who through the exploitation of the gospel, through the exploitation of the poor, um, they've turned their churches into money-making schemes, who have turned their, their ministries into ways of enriching themselves and blocking people from really encountering God without having a a credit card that is able to serve or to, without having the, the right resources sorry to worship God in the way that they are expected to in those 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 churches and by doing so they make a mockery of the faith they are a poor advertisement of who and what the church is supposed to be and ultimately they prevent many people from encountering God and encountering Jesus um, by these obstacles that put in their way Jesus restores hope by restoring the true purpose of the temple, by getting rid of all these money lenders, getting rid of these business people. He restores the temple as a place of worship for God. So the take home points that the study is making for the week is that Christ has purposefully put himself out there and made the claim of being king, made the claim of being God. And the responsibility on, is on us to acknowledge him as such, to acknowledge Christ as king, and to acknowledge Christ as God who personally visits with us through the Holy Spirit, and as God who has compassion on our sins, um, but who will readily destroy and, and violently attack those things that prevent his people from worshipping him. And even as we start to get together again as churches, um, as worship services become more open and more free, Maybe now is a good time that we, um, both personally 
and as a body, um, that we, the church, even at North Pine, uh, maybe ask ourselves the question, is, are we a good advertisement in this time of God's purpose for His church um, as a vehicle for His worship? Thank you very much, and um, enjoy the study. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night and on Sunday.